Today we shall be looking at cleft lip and cleft palate. A cleft lip and a cleft palate are known as orofacial clefts. These are congenital anomalies that arise from improper fusion of maxillofacial structures. This fusion usually happens between the fourth week and twelfth weeks of gestation. A cleft lip could be either a unilateral cleft lip or a bilateral, or it could be either complete or incomplete. On the other hand, a cleft palate could occur on the soft palate or on the hard palate, or sometimes it appears both on the soft palate and the hard palate. Sometimes we could have a combination of a cleft lip and a cleft palate. And in rare cases, there could be an occurrence of an atypical cleft that is either on the median side, the transverse, or oblique. The cause of cleft lip and cleft palate is multifactorial. The commonest one being genetic causes, or teratogens such as alcohol consumption during pregnancy, phenytoin use, retinoic acid or tobacco abuse in pregnancy. Folic acid deficiency has also been implicated as one of the causes or the risk factors in the development of cleft lip and cleft palate. Cleft lip and cleft palate is also noted in some syndromes, for example, Van der Wood and Pierre Robin syndrome. When looking at the clinical features, a cleft lip is visible at birth and may affect an alveolar ridge, and a cleft palate can affect the hard palate or the soft palate, and as well be associated with feeding and speech issues. In children with pyrrhobin sequence, we could realize a presence of micrognathia, glossothosis, cleft palate, and airway or feeding issues together with heart defects. Some of the associated anomalies are a congenital heart disease, which is quite common, hearing loss due to a recurrent otitis media, dental malocclusion, enamel hypoplasia in cleft lip, speech and language delay, and facial asymmetry. The diagnosis of cleft lip and cleft palate is largely clinical. However, we can perform a prenatal ultrasound from the 20th weeks of gestation. Postnatally, you can as well perform a physical examination, a feeding assessment, hearing assessment, and a genetic evaluation of these two anomalies. One of the issues that is so common in children with cleft lip and cleft palate is feeding difficulties. Therefore, they require a feeding support. In the cleft lip, breastfeeding is usually possible. On the cleft palate side, there is a need to use special bottles known as Haberman bottles or a cross-cut nibble bottle. Mothers are advised to perform upright feeding to prevent aspiration and sometimes a palatal obturator can be used to aid in feeding. Managing children with cleft lip and cleft palate anomalies needs a multidisciplinary team which includes a pediatrician, a plastic surgeon, an ENT surgeon, an audiologist, a speech pathologist, a dentist, geneticist, psychologist, an orthodontist, and a nurse coordinator. Some important information that we need to know regarding the cleft lip and cleft palate treatment is the treatment timeline. A diagnosis is made either in the prenatal period or at birth and counseling is carried out, there's a feeding support to support these children gain some weight before surgery. At around three months, lip repair can be done and tympanostomy could be as well be done if needed. 
at about six months of age, orthodontic and speech evaluation, and a palate repair and speech therapy is done at approximately nine months to one year. And between one to seven years, orthodontic review and speech therapy are carried out. And alveolar bone grafting can be performed at seven to eight years. And lastly, orthodontic review and orthognatic surgery can be performed at patients in patients who are above eight to 18 years old. And during surgical considerations, a rule of 10 is applied. The surgery can be done at 10 weeks of age, when a child is at least 10 pounds, having an hemoglobin level of more than 10 grams per deciliter. Chiloplasty surgery can as well be done to improve feeding, speech, and psychosocial health. A palatoplasty can improve speech function, and bone grafting can as well be performed to support the teeth and nasal flow. Some complications that are associated with cleft lip and cleft palate anomalies are hearing losses, speech delays, psychosocial issues, dental and nasal deformities that needs revision. Early intervention yields normal development in these children 